Hey guys, welcome to your Monday, September 21st asynchronous lesson. I am Mr. Sansoni, and this will be going out to either Mr. Roden's class, Ms. Horner's class, or my class as far as your September 21st asynchronous lesson. Today, we're going to be focusing in on 9.2, and that deals with the product of powers property. Before we start on our math, I'm going to share my good thing with you. Uh, you're going to be seeing this on Monday, September 21st. So my good thing is actually a prediction. And my prediction is hopefully that the day before, so on Sunday, September 20th, the Pittsburgh Steelers will have beaten the Denver Broncos to go to 2-0. and So that is my good thing. Uh, if they lose to the Broncos, then obviously my good thing is not true, but I'm hopeful. And so hopefully when you see this, the Steelers will be 2-0 and after beating the Broncos on Sunday. Looking at our focus word of the day, today we're going to use the, um, the social contract word ownership. I know that as we are doing asynchronous lessons, you don't have any interaction with us as teachers. So you need to take ownership to make sure that you are understanding the lesson that is being presented to you, making sure that you are doing everything that we talked about in the lesson and then making sure that you go back and watch the lesson if something doesn't make sense the first time. There's nothing wrong with something not making sense the first time, but there is something wrong if you don't truly understand what's going on and then you fail to go back and watch it again so that you understand the, the material before you start your homework. Our learning target for today is working with the product of powers property. So dealing with exponents and understanding what we need to do when we have a product of powers and dealing with those exponents. So before we get started on looking at a bunch of examples and then me having you try a bunch of on your own problems, I'm going to give you a basic kid-friendly outline of what this section is about. So on my PowerPoint that I'm going to show you right here, I just want you to copy down basically these three bullet points. And if you understand these three bullet points along with the examples that I'm going to do with you, then 9.2 should be fairly easy. So I'm going to show you this. And then as I go through the entire lesson, I'm never going to pause the video myself. The lesson's just going to run straight through. But you want to make sure that when I tell you to pause it, you pause the video, you write down whatever you need to do. And so that you are able to move along with the entire lesson. And then you can pause it at your own uh, discretion. So here are basically the three things that you need to know for 9.2 working with the product of powers property. So I'm going to enlarge that for you real quick. And so you can see 9.2 deals with the product of powers property. And then you have those three bullet points. So at this time, I want you to pause the video. I want you to write those down. You probably have some sort of notes and examples spiral or a piece of paper. And so we will do examples that tie into all three of those bullet points. So pause the video at this time, and then you can write that stuff down before we start the examples. Okay, now moving forward, I am going to share my screen with you, and we're going to look at all three of those bullet points, and we're going to make sure that we have enough examples so that you can do some on your own and so that you are good to go as far as 9.2. So I'm gonna share my screen. And the first thing that we are going to look at is multiplying powers with the same base. Now, when I say the same base, I am talking about this large number right here. So this property does not work if your bases are not the same, but when I look, the first thing I identify is, are my bases the same? And my bases are the same because they're both two. Now, the rule for multiplying two numbers with the same base and they have exponents is I get to add them together. I just add my exponents. I keep the base. I add my exponents together. But we're going to actually look to see why does that work. So if you identify what two to the fourth actually means, 2 to the 4th means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So that is what 2 to the 4th means. And then 2 to the 5th 
means five more twos. Two times two times two times two times two. Now, ideally, I would not have to write all of this down, but I'm just showing you why this works, why we just truly get to add the exponents when we have the same base. So if two to the fourth means this, and two to the fifth means this, then two to the fourth times two to the fifth means I have a bunch of twos. And so I just get to count how many twos I have in my problem. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I have nine twos. So my final answer is two to the ninth because two to the fourth times two to the fifth equals two to the ninth. And so now I can see my shortcut and I can see, oh wait, I don't have to write this out and write that out. I could just take my shortcut and say, wait, the bases are the same. So when the bases are the same with a multiplication problem, all I need to do is just take my two exponents and add them together. So four plus five is nine. When I look at the second example, I've got negative five times negative five to the sixth power. Well, negative five and negative five, I can clearly see that I have the same base. However, what I do not see is I do not see an exponent with this first base. And so when you do not see an exponent, your exponent is always going to be 1. So this is really negative 5. And I'm going to put this in parentheses because there is a difference between not having the entire number in parentheses and having the number in parentheses based off of whatever the exponent is. Okay, sometimes it matters, sometimes it does not. So I have negative 5 as my base for the first part. Negative 5 is my base for the second part. So now I'm going to write it out. And like I said, I know the shortcut, but I'm just going to write it out so we can visualize why does the shortcut actually work. So I've got 1 negative 5 times 6 more negative fives. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm just going to go back and just double check. My first part I had one negative five, so there it is right there. My second part, I'm going to multiply six more negative fives. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I have one negative five times six more negative five, so I can clearly see that I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven negative fives. So since my base was negative 5 and it is a multiplication problem, then all I really need to do, my shortcut says all I need to do is add those two exponents together and we can clearly see that 1 plus 6 is 7. Now the third example that I'm going to do with you. Once again, the first step that I always do is I look to see if the bases are the same. If the bases are not the same, then this does not work. But my bases are the same because the first base is an X and the second base is an X. So since my bases are the same and it is a multiplication problem, then I am going to get to add these exponents together. So I'm going to keep my base and I'm going to add the exponents together. But we're going to write it out just to verify, just to solidify our shortcut. Because shortcuts are great, but if you don't know when shortcuts should be used, then all of a sudden you have a mixture of all these shortcuts that you know, and then you start scrambling them up, and then you make mistakes. So this is x to the third, which is 3x's, times x to the seventh. 
And so that means I have seven more X's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the first factor I have X to the third, there's my X to the third. My second one, I have seven X's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just double check to make sure I have all seven. So if I have X to the third times X to the seventh, I can count up all my X's. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have ten total X's. So then my final answer is X to the tenth. I showed you visually why it works. But once again, we want to utilize our shortcut. If I have the same base and it's a multiplication problem, then all I get to do and all I need to do is add my exponents, keep the same base. So 3 plus 7 is 10. So you can see that it is x to the 10th. So here's where I want you to pause the video. And I want you to try these three problems on your own, working with the same concept. So the product of powers property, when you have the same base and it's a multiplication problem, all you need to do is you need to just add the exponents, keep the base and add the exponents. So solve these three problems on your own. And then once you're done, unpause the video and see if you did it correct. So I'm not going to actually stop it. I'm gonna continue, but pause the video at this time. And then when you're done, unpause the video. So here we go. I have a multiplication problem. I have six squared times six to the fourth. I look to see if they have the same base. They do have the same base. So since they have the same base, all I need to do is keep my base and add the exponents. Let's verify that that shortcut's going to work. I've got 6 squared, which is 6 times 6. Ooh. The dot was too large. Times another 4 sixes. So I've got 6 times 6 times 6 times 6. Same base. So my base stays the same. Now I'm just going to add up. How many sixes am I actually dealing with? One, two, three, four, five, six. So my final answer is six to the sixth. See if the shortcut works. Well, two plus four is six. So all I needed to do was write my base and then add my exponents together. And so I'm going to get my base with my exponents. So it is six to the sixth. And we are writing our answers as powers. So for right now, we do not have to simplify. You do not have to tell me what is 6 to the 6th power. Okay? For this one, I'm now getting comfortable enough that I know that I don't actually have to write it out. I'm just going to use my shortcut. So I'm going to identify, are my bases the same? They are. Notice I'm going to take my entire base... And I'm just going to copy it. And since the bases are the same, all I need to do is add my exponents together. So I have three negative one-thirds in the first part, and I have two negative one-thirds in the second part. So adding my exponents, three plus two, my final answer is negative one-third to the fifth power. And then the third one is going to be z times z to the 12th power. Once again, we get to the part where, oh, wait, I don't see an exponent. So if you do not see an exponent, it is always to the first power. Make sure it is to the first power. If you do not see an exponent, don't put it to the zero power. There's a big difference between something to the zero power and something to the first power. So if you do not see an exponent, replace it with a one. So I'm going to look carefully, always. Make sure your bases are the same, and they are. So my base is z. And then all I need to do is add my exponents together. And so my exponent for the first base is 1. My exponent for the second base is 12. So adding exponents is my rule because I have the same base. 
So 1 plus 12 is 13. And that is your first of three that we're dealing with multiplying powers with the same base. Okay? So to wrap up that piece, to multiply powers with the same base, all you need to do is add the exponents. Okay? The second piece is a little different. Now we're looking at raising a power to a power. Now notice on this it's a little different because I only have one base and I'm raising a power to a power. So notice I have two exponents and one base. So there is a shortcut to this and then we're going to use the shortcut once we get comfortable enough with what are we actually looking at. So if this says 3 to the 4th to the 3rd power, that means I have 3 of these. So I have 3 of those. Look carefully to see why that works. This is 3 to the 4th. And it says I have 3 of those. So I have 1 3 to the 4th. I have 2 3 to the 4th. I have 3 3 to the 4th. So I'll even go a step further. Now going back to what we did on the last section. 3 to the 4th. Well, what does that mean? That means 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And then I have a second 3 to the 4th. So that means 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And then I have a third 3 to the 4th. So that means 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Now the reason I do this is because I have now two different sets of rules, and so I want to be able to figure out which one of the rules am I going to apply to whichever situation. So if you write something out and you say, oh, I know that this means this, then you do not confuse the rules together because sometimes you're going to add the exponents, sometimes you're going to multiply the exponents. So by me writing this out, I can see that I have four threes there, I have four threes there, and I have four threes there. So really, how many threes do I have? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So since I have all threes, my final answer is three to the twelve. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to apply my shortcut and see if that works. So when you're raising a power to a power, we're no longer adding these exponents. We are going to multiply the exponents. So if we understand that, oh, let's see, 4 times 3 is 12, then that is my shortcut. 4 times 3 is 12. If that doesn't make sense for you, you don't have to go all the way to this step right here. You could go to this step right here just to understand what does it actually mean and then we go back to the first rule. When we are multiplying powers with the same base, we get to add the exponents. So you can see that you have 4 here, plus another 4 there, which is 8, plus another 4 there, which is still 3 to the 12. I would prefer just to go straight to it knowing that, oh, I know this is a power of a power. So I know that I have my single base right here. I see that I have two exponents, a power of a power. So I just know that immediately I'm going to go four times three, which is going to be 12. Okay. So you can choose how far you want to break this down to understand that, oh, I am multiplying four times three. If I look at letter B, it says W to the fifth to the fourth power. So that means I have one W to the fifth. Then I have a second W to the fifth. 
This is my key exponent right there. I have a third w to the fifth, and I have a fourth w to the fifth. So let's just verify. It says w to the fifth four times. One, two, three, four. w to the fifth, w to the fifth, w to the fifth, w to the fifth. So, do I want to write this out? No, but I will. I've got, what does w to the fifth mean? w times w times w times w times w. That's the first w to the fifth. Times, here's the second w to the fifth. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to run out of room. I can already see that. Here's my next, my third W to the fifth. One, two, three, four, five. And then I have one more W to the fifth. So I guess I'm coming down to this next line. One, two, three, four, five. So when I'm all said and done right here, I have all these W's. So now I just have to figure out well, how many W's is, is that. So I'm just going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I have 20. So my final answer is going to be W to the 20th. Now, is that a good use of my time? Well, yes and no. It's a good use of my time if I don't understand what W to the 5th to the 4th is means. But if I do understand the shortcut, then I'd much rather use the shortcut because it's going to save me a ton of time. Even if you want to go just to this step, like I said, if you have W to the fifth times W to the fifth times W to the fifth times W to the fifth, that helps you to see that, oh, I have the same base. And then I have five, 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 and five. So I get to add my exponents, 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5, which is W to the 20th because 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 is 20. Even better is if you just see, oh, I have one single base right there, and I have a power of a power. So I'm just going to say, oh, 5 times 4 is 20. So I can go straight to my answer if you truly understand the shortcut. Okay? These steps right here help you to understand why the shortcut works. Shortcuts are great, but if you don't understand why they work and when they need to be applied, everything gets confused and you miss problems left and right. So then we have these four examples that I want you to try on your own. So I want you at this time to pause your video. Then when you are done solving these four problems, then I want you to unpause the video and see if your answers are correct. Okay, I'm going to keep going. So hopefully you've paused the video and you've answered these questions before you're watching me solve them. I'm going to apply the shortcut for each one of these. So I've got four to the fourth to the third. And actually for the first two, I'll do the, I'll work it out just a little bit. I'm not going to go straight to the shortcut. So I want to understand what does four to the fourth to the, to the third power mean? So four to the fourth to the third means I have three four to the fourth. And you know that when two factors are pushed together, it means multiply. So this means 4 to the 4th times 4 to the 4th times 4 to the 4th. So I'm not going to go the final step, but I'm going to look and I see I have the same base. And so when I have the same base and it's a multiplication problem, I get to add my exponent. So 4 plus 4 plus 4, so it looks like my final answer should be 4 to the 12th. Well, let's verify, because the rule says when you have a 
power to a power, all you have to do is you have to just multiply your exponents. And it's a little fuzzy on the screen, but this says four to the fourth times, or four to the fourth to the third. So all I need to do is go four times three, and four times three is 12. Number two, I have y squared to the fourth, which means I have y squared times y squared times y squared times y squared means I have four y squareds. So I'm not going to go all the way down to the bottom. But I am going to go to this step, and so I say, oh, wait, I have the same base. And so if I have the same base and these are multiplication, then I just get to add my exponents. 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 8. So my final answer is y to the 8th. So let's see if our shortcut works. Well, I have y squared to the 4th, power to a power. So y squared to the fourth, all I need to do is really just multiply those two exponents. Two times four is eight. So my shortcut works, and I understand why my shortcut works, because I wrote it out at least partway. Okay, I'm not going to write this one out. This says pi to the third to the third. So I have pi to the third to the third. My base is pi. So that is going to... Stay my base. I have pi to the third to the third, raising a power to a power. So I'm just going to multiply. What is three times three? And three times three is nine. Number four is a little bit confusing because you have two sets of parentheses. And the reason you have two sets of parentheses is because they want you to make sure that you are taking the entire negative four to the third power. And then you're taking that entire negative 4 to the third power, and then you are squaring it. So I'm actually going to write this one out just a little bit. So I have negative 4 to the third power, but then it says you are squaring it. So that means you want to have two of those. So you, then you have a second negative 4 to the third power. So it's negative 4 to the third power but it's squared, so I want two of those negative four to the third powers. So I have my same base. And so since I have my same base and it's multiplication, then I go, oh, three plus three is six. So my base is negative four and I want it to the sixth power. Let's see if our shortcut works. Three times two is six. So you can see that my base, my only base, was negative 4. 3 times 2 is 6. So that is your second rule for today's lesson, and that is, once again, raising a power to a power. There is one more set, and this is raising a product to a power. So a product, once again, product means the answer to a multiplication problem. So a product inside the parentheses is, notice you have a 2 times x. There's your product because you're multiplying 2 times x. And I'm going to raise the product to a power. So I'm still going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to look inside the parentheses, and I'm going to see what do I see inside the parentheses. And in this instance, I'm going to say, oh, I have three of those. So if you write this stuff out, it helps you to see, to understand the shortcut, the rule. So if I have 2x to the third power, that means I have 3 2x's. 2x means 2 times x. So that means I have really... 2 times x times 2 times x times 2 times x. So once two items are pushed together, it means multiply. 
And so then I notice that I have twos. I also have X's. And so I'm going to group them in a different manner. I'm going to put all my twos together. So notice I have three twos. And notice I have three X's. So I'm going to lump my X's together. So on the left side of my answer, I'm going to have what is 2 times 2 times 2. So I'm going to simplify what is 2 times 2 times 2. Well, 2 times 2 is 4 times another 2 is 8. And then all I can do with my x's, x times x times x, because x is a variable, I don't know what x is, is I'm just going to list how many X's that I have. And so I have three X's. So my answer is eight times X to the third. So I am going to look and see, well, how does that work for my shortcut? Because the rule says when you have a product raised to a power, you're going to take everything inside your parentheses and you're going to do whatever you need to do as far as the exponent. So this says I have 2x to the third power. So that means I have 2 to the third power because that's my first piece. But I also have x to the third power. So instead of me having to write it all out, I know that I have three 2x's. So I have to take 2 to the third power. I also have to take x to the third power. And then I just clean this up. I can't clean up the variable, but I can clean up 2 to the third. So you can go back to your uh, cube root page, your chart, and you can say, oh, wait, 2 to the third, that's a perfect cube. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And I can't do anything with the x, so it's just x to the third. And then I don't need the dot. I know that it is multiplication when they're pushed together. So my final answer is 8x to the third. So using that shortcut, knowing that I'm going to take everything inside the parentheses and I'm going to use the exponent to say how many I have of each, I see this. This is an xy pushed together xy. So xy pushed together means x times y. And it says I have two of them. So I have x times y, and it tells me you want two of those times x times y. Well, let's group like terms. So you can see that you have x times x. And the reason I'm able to do this is because of the commutative property. It doesn't matter when you're multiplying, when it's all multiplication. You can put them in any order because it's not going to change your answer. And so I group my X's, and now I'm going to group my Y's. And so I can clearly see that I have two X's, so that's X squared. And I also have two Y's, which is Y squared. And then I just eliminate this dot because I know that when two... Oh, I say I'm going to eliminate the dot, and then I don't eliminate the dot. When I have two pushed together, it means multiply. So my answer is x squared, y squared. Let's see if the shortcut works. Inside the parentheses, I have two bases because x, y means x times y. So I'm just going to take each of my bases inside, and I'm going to follow the directions. It says I want two of each. So that means it equals x squared times y squared, which means x squared, y squared. And I can't go any further than this because they're both variables. So I don't know what x is and I don't know what y is, but I know that I want x squared and I know that I want y squared. Okay, your last three, you're going to pause the video at this time. And your last three on your own examples are going to be right there. I'm not going to pause the video, but once again, you pause the video and I'm going to continue working. Once you're done working, I want you to unpause it and make sure you have the correct answers and make sure you understand why it is what it is. So I have 
inside parentheses, I have 5y, which means 5 times y. You can clearly see that I have two bases. I have the 5 and I have the y. So now I'm going to follow the directions. It says I want 4 of each. So right now I'm just going to write I want 4 5ys. And so I'm going to regroup. I'm going to put all my fives together. 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. And then I'm going to put my y's together. y times y times y times y. So now I get to simplify what is 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. So what is 5 to the fourth? So if I'm solving this problem, I'm doing it like this. 5 times 5 is 25 times the other 5 times 5 is 25. And then this allows me to use my perfect square or my square root chart. And I know that 25 times 25 is 625. And then I have all these y's over here, and I can't do anything with that because those are variables. I don't know what y is, but I can say that I have four of them. So my final answer, tighten it up just a little bit, is 625 y to the fourth. For number two, I have two of those. I have two of 0.5 times n's. So I'm going to regroup. And so I know that I have 0.5 times 0.5. Those are my numbers. And then my variables, I'm going to group those together as well. And I have 0.5, oh, I'm sorry, I have n times n. So now I'm just going to do some quick math to simplify the numeric portion of it. So I have 0.5 times 0.5. So if I ignore the decimals, 5 times 5 is 25, but it's not 5 times 5. It's 0.5 times 0.5. So then 0.5 times 0.5 is actually 0.25 since I have two numbers behind the decimal. And then I have two n's, which is n squared. So my final answer is 0.25 n squared. I'll show you real quick another way to do this. If you're a fraction fan more than a decimal fan, you should know that 0.5 is one half as a fraction. So I'm going to put it over here. I have one half n times one half n. And so I have one half as I group my like terms. One half times one half times n times n. Well, half times half, when you multiply fractions, half times half, you just multiply straight across. So one half times one half is one fourth, which makes sense because one fourth of a dollar is 0.25. And then you have n squared. And then your last one, you have in parentheses, notice you have a times b. So you have two bases, you have A and B. So you're going to take both bases to the fifth power. So that means I want five of these. And I also want five of these. So I want each base to the fifth power because the exponent's five. And I can't do anything with either one of those because they're both variables. So the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten it up a little bit. So I don't put the dot in between because I know when they're pushed together, it means multiply. So that is your third rule working with section 9.2. It is raising a product to a power. So you have homework tonight on 9.2. It is on Schoology. Hopefully this lesson was a success. If you did not understand all of it, there is no problem with going back and watching this again. Make sure you have a complete understanding of the three different rules that we're applying to products and powers and make sure that once you have done everything you need to do as far as all the examples and making sure you understand it that you go in and you, you do your homework before the, de the deadline which is going to be Friday. So hopefully you enjoyed this lesson 
And I will talk to you soon. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.